conversation about economic transformation, but real economic transformation, not this radical economic transformation, the real one, is important at a time in which year after year, we got it wrong. And year after year, we got our country to a point in which now we're all suffering in many different ways, not only because of our recession, but because of this rampant inequality, which is still there so many years after the end of apartheid, and also because of the growing discontent that we see every single day. I mean, like the latest one being taxi drivers attacking Uber drivers everywhere and, and you know, like, and police having to patrol our how train station. This is not normal, let me tell you. It's not normal that in a country we face these kind of challenges. It's not normal. It's, it, we, probably in South Africa at times we get to the point of accepting it as normal. But I think we have a moral duty to take a step back and realize these things are not normal. These things shouldn't happen. We shouldn't have so many people in poverty. We shouldn't have so much inequality. We shouldn't have this huge divide. We shouldn't have so much violence. We shouldn't have so much crime and so on and so forth. And so my book is really about this simple question. Is it possible in the 21st century, in a country like South Africa, to sit back, look at what we have done, and think of a different approach to economic development? Is it possible to focus on well-being. And we know what well-being is. Well-being is a simple thing. Research shows us, we decide to ignore it all the time, but research shows us that the well-being of a society is by and large the proxy, the result of two main drivers. Strong ecosystems are natural systems. We cannot, even though Elon Musk would like to take us to Mars, the reality is that we cannot thrive without nature around us, without good environment, without a healthy environment, without ecosystems that make the water we drink possible, right? And the air we breathe, you know, like, um, available. And the other driver is the people, society, social capital, you know what I mean? You call it whatever you want. These are the two main drivers, an economy that is successful is an economy that prioritizes natural and social systems and builds development on that. Guess what? We've done exactly the opposite. By adopting a misconceived and myopic approach to economic growth, we have sold out our natural systems for centuries to, for instance, mining companies that are now leaving us with all the problems and take the money away, and they're not employing anybody anymore. I mean, the level of, of employment in the mining industry is really, really staggering. And we keep giving them licenses to dig even further, even though they tell us, look, be careful. I'm going to take the money away, and I'm not going to hire anybody. And we say, OK, it's fine, fine. Keep doing it anyway. And we have also humiliated and, and oppressed a lot of our people, uh, whether it is through rampant inequality, the huge divide, but also many people in the room. Um, you know, today I was in Port Elizabeth. And I, I was invited to speak at a meeting with, between the city and the World Bank. And again, you know, like, I'm really, really surprised at the fact that up until a few years ago, the World Bank and I were on two opposite sides. And now the World Bank is inviting me to speak. He's speaking, he's actually paying a speaker fee, which is quite hefty, let me tell you, for me to say what I'm saying to you now. And the World Bank there with the banner saying, this is our approach now, finally. And they are themselves saying, the city that is going to be successful in the future will be a city in which human capital is prioritized, in which we invest in small businesses rather than in big businesses, in which we create jobs in many different sectors, in which we focus on the well-being of the people and start realizing that exploiting nature is counterproductive. This is what the World Bank's approach is now becoming more and more. It's sort of come, becoming mainstream. So the book says exactly this. The book, the book is arguing that we can, especially now we're at the junk status, right? So it couldn't get worse than this. When you're junk, you may, you, you, worst case scenario, you're going to stay junk. So you can only improve. So maybe it's time for experimentation. It's time, the United Nations has done a research, and it tells us that, for instance, that when we calculate the amount of money that we need to spend to fix everything that is being broken by large industrial production, and if we were to ask these companies to pay that money back, just like imagine I come to your house and my kid is breaking your vase or whatever, you know, something beautiful you have in your room, you would expect me to, you know, for good friends, you wouldn't expect me to do anything. Maybe the third and the fourth time that I come and break stuff, at some point you're going to say, hey, would you mind paying for it? And I would say, fine. Well, we never ask companies to do that. And you may think, well, but it's a small amount of money. Not at all. 
The World Bank and the UN have done a study published in 2013 that shows that the 20 largest industrial sectors in the world, including all the energy and mining uh, companies, fossil fuel energy and mining companies, the large scale distribution, as well as food production, all the largest in industrial sectors are generating more damage than profits. So if we were to ask them to give us the money back and pay for it, they would go belly up because they cannot make enough money to pay for the cost. And this is a big thing, but never, we have never considered that as part of our growth strategy. We have never thought about growth as being increasing the value of things we have. We break things and we generate profits for a few and we call it growth. But it's not that wealth wasn't there before. There was a lot of wealth that was there that was used, has been used for production. And unless you can show me that your production is really increasing the value, I cannot call it growth. It's simply replacing one kind of wealth for another kind of wealth. But the first kind of wealth is shared by everyone. The second kind of wealth becomes privatized by a few, and we call it growth. So in the book, I simply argue that the future of economic development is about decentralized economic empowerment. It's about moving away from a system of centralized production, which is dominated by a few big companies, to a system of production that is going to be led by many, many small businesses. That's why I think a lot of small, you know, I get invited all the time to speak to small businesses. They love this. They thought, finally, somebody says, we are the real leaders. And I said, you know, the future of the South African economy is really hinging on the ability to give small businesses a level playing field to play in this economy. The current economy is tilted in favor of large companies. Mm -hmm.